Good morning, Nation. Good morning, Nicole Bernard. Good morning. <laughs> hey, we made it. We made it to the table here first. And you got, I see you got your coffee cup. Mm-hmm. I do. You do. You, you do. You do. So Business Athlete Nation, Keith and Nicole are sitting here for the first time. Can you hear the tunes, Nicole? I can. I love it. Yeah, a little bit of soft jazz to bring us in here on our first show. Cheers to you. Mm -hmm. Up oh, There you go. There you go. <laughs> so I texted Nicole this morning. I said, hey, we can't talk because we got to keep this organic and natural on the air here. So we, mm -hmm. so everybody listening right now, we have not spoken. And as we get this thing underway, I, Nicole and I started talking. It was a couple of weeks ago. We actually... We're working on another project, and Nicole says to me, "Hey, I'm training for this ultra marathon." Like, yeah. <laughs> Look, I need some accountability. You mm -hmm. know, partners. I'm like, all right, let's do it together. She's like, okay. And I'm like, why don't we start a morning show and hold each other be accountable and hold you accountable and maybe hold our audience accountable? And Nicole, says, yeah. <laughs> Seemed like a great idea when I said yes. <laughs> no, it's still a great idea. It's just early, but I like it. Until, until we recognized that it was daylight savings time this morning. <laughs> yes. Goodness. Yes. I didn't even think of that. So really it's poor. No wonder I'm like half asleep. <laughs> you and me both. And it's funny because I always wanted to do a morning show. And then when we decided to do a morning show, I'm like, all right, let, let's do the morning show. And now it's here. Yeah. And admittedly, it's, it's it changes my whole routine. Same. Yeah. I, I actually really like it because I don't quite have a routine right now. And that's what I've been uh -huh. wanting to change. And so, yeah, that, here we go. <laughs> so I can tell you, and I'll tell the audience. So we have plans here. So here's the plan, Nation. Keith and Nicole plan on sitting here from 7 till 8 live. And then we're going to run a loop for the extra hour from 8 till 9. So we're all central time. So 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock Eastern time. And I guess 2 a.m. till 4 a.m. Nicole, so Nicole's in Oregon over on the West Coast. <laughs> She's in the middle of the night right now. Mm -hmm. so all of our all of our listeners yeah exactly do we love or hate daylight say do you love ha daylight saving time or do you hate it i forget about it honestly so i don't really care i did hear on the news though that i think oregon and washington maybe california too are thinking of getting rid of it just like arizona so mm -hmm. i don't know i don't know if it's past. i don't think it's past because clearly my clock's changed over the weekend but yeah <laughs> yeah my dogs were all confused yesterday nicole yeah Dogs are like, is it time to eat that? I'm like, no, not yet. No, not mm -hmm. yet. No, not for another hour yet. So then this morning I got up earlier than typical. And they all looked at me like, dad, you're up. Yeah. I know. Yes. My black lab, she's usually super energetic and like her tail wakes everybody up because it's just smacking around. And I got up this morning and she was like, <laughs> she didn't even move. <laughs> like she's still on the couch. <laughs> and exactly. today's her second birthday, actually. Oh, so. yeah. Well, happy, what's the dog's name? Nova. She's happy a spaz. Happy birthday, Spazzy Nova. There you go. So the, the ambition here with our show audience is to give you a couple of friendly voices to start your day, a couple of friendly voices to maybe uh, get your day going, a couple of friendly voices to hold you accountable, uh, to help you get moving and so forth. I, I did something, Nicole, that I hate doing. I did it this morning, first of all, before we sat down here today. Oh, what was it? I went for a run. Do you hate running? I hate Good it. For you. I do. I hate it. I absolutely fucking hate it. But you know what? Oh, yeah. And I, I decided that we're going to make this morning show PG. So I'll have to my it. But I, I hate it. I absolutely hate running. So my, my wife says, so then why do you run? I'm like, because I hate it. Mm -hmm. And the best way for me to get better is to run towards and accept things that I hate. I love that. Yeah, no, I don't really like running either. Uh, as much as I do it, it's just a means to, I don't know, getting get going places. I don't know. <laughs> like, I'm a soccer player, so I like to run on the field, but not, like, just running and running. But that's amazing. So yeah. I love – well, and I'm going to have to do the opposite as well because I don't really like lifting weights. And I know you have an awesome job. Yeah, and I so do. I have to – I've got to start strength training. So we're, like, switching. Switching over, switching things over. Yes. Yeah. So that was how I started my day this morning. I went for a run. So I got the old alarm set for me this morning at uh, five. I went and adjusted my routine, grabbed some coffee at the dogs, grabbed some coffee, caught up on the news, got my mindset for this morning, went down, did a run to the side of this wall over here, and then got ready for our first show. 
And I was like, all right, so here's how it's going to go. So here's what I'm thinking, how we'll do this. So we're putting 60 minutes on the clock for the audience with the ambition being we want the audience to get to know us. So today we're going to do a little bit of back and forth interview. The audience can get to know Keith, get to know Nicole. And then over time, I thought the ambition would be is that we're going to we're going to create conversation and have discussion around topics that fill the four pillars of the business athlete performance lab. Mm -hmm. So we'll dig into current event topics around business. We'll have discussions around athletics adventure i like adventure mm -hmm. ai i know you love ai nicole bernard <laughs> love it <laughs> <laughs> we'll do some ai training here on the show we're going to talk performance pop culture hey the oscars were last night i saw that or i saw i saw instagram stories about that is what i should say <laughs> yes yes exactly so that's so this is perfect actually because this is this shines a spotlight on what's changing in the world. So the Oscars were broadcast on, I don't even know where they're broadcast. They're all over the television networks, but yeah. you found them on Instagram stories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I saw Oppenheimer one. That's the only one that I know that I saw. Um, yes. Have you seen the movie? Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. oh, you haven't good movie. I said, yeah, I've heard. I, I haven't been to the movie theater in I don't know how long, but yeah, I, I do need to go see it. You should, 100% you should. It might even be on, on the old streaming oh, platform. Oh, probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Downey won too, Don, Downey, Jr., Downey Jr. won too, I believe. Oh, I don't know, I love him. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so our ambition is audience, you'll get, to, you'll get some, we're hoping that you spend the hour with us, you'll pop in, and I'm gonna break the show into segments. So we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna open up with a little opening monologue, catch you guys up with Keith and Nicole, catch your day started and so forth, and try to keep this personal, get engagement, get people dialing in and talking with us. We are live on LinkedIn, we're on X, we're on YouTube, we're on Twitch, we're on Facebook, we're everywhere. So the, the plan here is to get engagement, get dialogue happening over the hour, get people encouraged, get people going, perhaps get people Nicole out of their comfort zones. Maybe after listening to us talk, they're like, yeah, you know what? I heard Nicole strength training. I heard Keith go for a run. Maybe I'll go do something. Mm -hmm. That's the idea here. And and truthfully, ripping a page out of traditional radio morning shows, just this idea of hanging out with Keith and Nicole for an hour in the morning and setting up the rest of the day. Like I said, I, I went for a run this morning, which I hated to do. So I got up, have my coffee, then went for my run, and then got myself set up. So I'll do this for an hour. And then when we're done here, my plan, Nicole, is to head back into the gym, and get my lift in. I love it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. What are you doing after this? I was going to knock out some work, actually, before my kids get up. So, yeah, I don't know if that will be my routine. I, I typically like to go running after I drop them off for school. So, yeah, I like, though, having – I'm going to have some time between this yes, you will. and then getting up, which is what I really like to do and knock out some stuff because I find that's when I work the quickest and best first thing yes. in the morning, and I just haven't – I haven't been doing that. So I'm uh, so this about it. This is good impetus then for you. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So our plan nation is to do is to cut this into 14, 15 minute segments. And you guys are going to see something like this pop up on the screen. Check this out. You're all going to see this. Oh, no. Where the hell did that go? That there. We're going to do this here. We are doing things on the fly. One thing that I love doing, I think it's a strong attribute of an entrepreneur. Is Nicole just jumping in and going. Yeah, same. So mm -hmm. we talked about this 10 days ago and we said, let's do it. Here I know here, here we are. I know a lot of people would plan and plan and I'm there's nothing wrong with that. I am yeah. all for planning. However, sometimes you just got to jump in and go. And this weekend I was talking with a couple of colleagues here who were creating some artwork for us and they're all stressed out about stuff. I'm like, nah, fuck man. It's, oops. Nah, it's the first show. It's going to be PG. Uh, no, it's the first show. We'll figure it out as we go. So some things aren't going to fit. Some things are going to fit. Um, but we're going to figure this out as we go along. And I hate to say make it up. We're going to make it up as we go along. Yeah, no, I think I totally agree. I think that's it's like a, something like an attribute to just go, yes, we all want to play and we have a strategize and have a good idea, but I think we get stuck sometimes. Yes. Kind of getting in our own head. Yeah. I was actually thinking about that this weekend because I'm 
releasing like something new and it's I've been I've been sitting on it for like months and then I oh. started thinking about my podcast and like my podcast I had literally no plan like at all other than to like drink champagne in my closet and talk to people and that was like four years ago and I don't know same thing I learned as I went but I just dove into it so I'm gonna have to take that approach as well because yes it is paralysis by analysis. And again, what I'm hoping is that we will encourage people to jump in here with us and say, hey, you know what? I've been hearing Keith and Nicole talking. And then maybe one day somebody will say, you know what? You guys inspired me to get going. We know a lot of morning shows that, that exist on terrestrial radio exist to, uh, to get people moving and to get people familiar with the hosts and get banter going. And same ambition here. Although the difference is we're not building this around a m music. This is going to be talk. Uh, we are going to put music into the show. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's we're keeping people, be, pe people moving forward, moving yeah. them forward. Mm -hmm. Why don't we do this today? Why don't we kick off today's show? Wow, well, we're already 14 minutes into this thing. People don't know Keith and Nicole. Mm -hmm. So this is show number one. My suggestion is we do a little back and forth interview so that people get to know Keith and Nicole. And they can say, okay, episode number one. I want to learn more about Keith. I want to learn more about Nicole. And then we'll go to number two, number three. And yes, everybody, we're going every day, Monday to Friday. No, we're not going to go weekends. We're going to leave that for the live in the lab show. But Keith and Nicole will be here Monday to Friday. And ideally, audience, ideally, you'll jump in and do uh, LinkedIn and see if people will join us, actually. That, that'll be cool. So you join us, join the conversation, jump in, maybe we'll have people co-host with us. And then over time here, over time, we've got a big audience of discussion happening all over the place. Sounds amazing. Let's just do a little back and forth interview, Keith and Nicole. Okay. So the audience can get to know who you and I are so they can decide whether they want to hang out with us or not. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Let's do that. Nicole Bernard, let's start with you. Let's go back and forth. You are joining us from where today? Hood River, Oregon. It is 5.15 my time right now. Hood River, Oregon, 5.15 a.m. <laughs> in Hood River. Yep. Yeah, we're like an hour east. Wait, I always get it confused. Yeah, east of Portland. Yeah, right at the base of Mount Hood, really. Okay, okay. Yes. And born, raised, and bred? I actually was born in Vancouver, Washington, an hour from here, but yeah. Moved, yeah, moved to New Orleans, Louisiana when I was like 12 and was there right. the majority of my life and then came back 2007, two years after Hurricane Katrina. And we've yeah. been up here ever since. Okay. Okay. And how big is the family? You got a family? Yep. Uh, my husband, Benton, this year we'll be married for 14 years, I think, 15. I don't know. Somewhere around there. And our daughter's 13. So yeah, 14. There you and go. Uh, yeah, our son's 10, and then we've got Nova, who just turned two. Awesome. So 13, 10, and two. 13-year-old daughter, 10-year-old son, and two-year-old yeah. daughter. Mm -hmm. And married for 14, maybe 15 years. Maybe even 16. Who knows? Yeah, somewhere around there. Somewhere in that calendar. <laughs> That's, does he know? Yeah, he barely knows what year it is, so I actually am better at that than him. <laughs> <laughs> what does your husband do? We had the farm, we had the farm and brewery before, and he did all that. Um, and then as we, when we sold the farm, we transitioned to, I started working and he stayed home with the kids and did homeschooling and all of that. Nice. Yeah. And he's been doing that, but two years ago, they started going full time to school. And so he's, I think he's going to start his own business. He's a carpenter by trade and we have 15 stools in our garage. Yeah. If anybody needs a stool, like a guitar stool. Let me know, because I can send one to you. <laughs> there you go. Hey, so we're 17 minutes into episode one, and we have the first call to action for the audience. If you need a stool. Need a stool. Nicole has stools <laughs> for sale here, mornings in the lab. Officially, we've got stools for you guys. So if you need somewhere to sit later today, you need somewhere to sit tomorrow, Nicole yep. can help you with her stool. Yep. So totally. this is, <laughs> is it Vin? What's your husband's name, Vin? Uh, Benton. Penton, so is he, does he have a passion for stools or is he good at making stools? I know, he what? was, he was like, he likes guitar. He loves playing guitar. And oh. so it's like a guitar stool. And he was like, uh, what do you think of my business called Benton Self Stool? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> do you met, like, you never grow out of this apparently? I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah, clearly. Yeah. So that's where we're at, but he's really been liking it. So yeah, he's got his little shop in our garage and yeah, he's always been an entrepreneur. It's actually because of him that I'm an entrepreneur. Cause I always thought I would work in like the corporate world wear really cool clothes and high heels. And then I ended up on a farm. So <laughs> did you say farm and brewery? Yeah. So, so, so you had a farm and a brewery with the farm, like a brewery on the farm site. Yeah. He built it. Like he literally built it from the ground up. So since we're farmers, seasonal business, and we liked, he was a home brewer anyway. And so a few years into the farm, we were like, oh wait, if we brew beer, we have an income year round. And that's where that came from. So yeah, we, and then we had the brewery for three years and then we ended up closing our doors. Oh, did it not work out? It actually worked out too well. And oh. our neighbors complained and we, have I not told you this story? I don't think I no. have. Uh, yeah. So we got like a big old cease and desist actually on his birthday. Here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His birthday went through a whole legal battle and we ended up losing after a public hearing. There was like some zoning that we didn't fill out when we first got like our license with the county. So not even federal. You'd think like federally, like alcohol would be yes. or whatever, but no, yeah. it turned out an issue with our county. So we ended up closing our doors. No um, yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Arlo was like one at the time. MMA was three. So crazy times, but looking back, things work out the way they're supposed to, but it was crazy. No kidding. So farm brewery got shut down with the brewery because of the neighbors. What did you guys farm? Did you farm agriculture, animals, or what were you guys farming? Yeah, we 40 different varieties of vegetables. So we did all the farmer's markets. We had a CSA produce on the farm. I also baked bread. So I would get up at insane hours like this and bake 30 <laughs> loaves of bread on the weekends. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we had a little homestead. That's, wow. So bread baker, farm, brewery. brewery. We'd make some cheese every once in a while. Ooh. Always make goat cheese. Oh, fuck. Cheese is my weakness, man. I thought, peanut butter. I thought peanut butter was your weakness. Well, peanut butter is my weakness. And I've been doing live in the lab here for a few months now. And, and we've been talking about the peanut butter jar. And the peanut butter jar is still taped up. So uh, if you're tuning into the morning show, I do a live show at noon central time, seven days a week. It's called Live in the Lab with Keith Billis. And we, we meet with interesting people from around the world and have interesting conversations. As a matter of fact, it's how I met Nicole. She was guest number two. And on that discussion we had back in September, October of 2023, we started talking with peanut butter. And I, I learned that my, my good friend Nicole here has a peanut butter problem bigger than I do. I, I do. It's, it's bad. Like it, it is bad. Yes. Yes, it's bad. So one day I get a text from Nicole and it's just a picture. <laughs> and it's a picture of a spoon. <laughs> and in the spoon is peanut butter, but in the spoon of peanut butter is much chocolate chips. Mm -hmm. And she's and the caption was, "I have a problem." Yes, you do have a problem. And then I went on to reveal to Nicole that the best thing to do is, and there, here's a question for the audience, Nicole: You take a bag of chocolate chips, you dump it into the peanut butter jar, you mix mm -hmm. it up, then you put the jar back in the cupboard. And you don't tell your family. And you tell them it's not crunchy peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Chocolate chip. Why has nobody invented chocolate chip filled peanut butter yet, Nicole? That's a good question, actually. Because I feel like I saw on the shelves recently, they have put like jelly in with the peanut butter now. But why wouldn't you put just chocolate chips? Yeah. I think Smucker's has had peanut butter and jelly for a long time. Mm -hmm. in, yeah. But why is there not peanut butter inside? I'm sorry. Chocolate in the peanut butter. Like You can actually make. Let me show you this. You could actually make a, this is the greatest invention ever, Nicole Bernard. Ever. A half pound peanut butter cup. Have you had one of these before? I've not had those ginormous ones, no. I, I need the, to get one. The right mix of chocolate coating on the peanut butter. Mm -hmm. When you take that bite, mm -hmm. it's just got the ultimate mixture of peanut butter and chocolate. Somebody, whoever created that is a genius. Whoever Reese's is. I it's think. true. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. true. It's true. So Portland, Oregon, farm, brewery, stool maker. So now hubby is uh, making stools and Nicole's driving the bus. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. MB marketing. Yep. So Nicole runs a marketing business out in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. 
Why don't you tell the audience about that? Yeah. So, yeah, have had NB Marketing since 2016. So, since, yeah, after we closed the farm and went and worked to the marketing agency. It's like my background's in marketing, like my degree and everything. Yeah. First started with Microsoft in like 2005, did all the marketing for the farm. So, yeah, made sense to branch out on my own again because I think I'm sure you're the same way. Went from entrepreneurship to working for someone who was amazing. I love him. He actually went, I went to high school with his younger brother, worked there for two and a half years. But I think once you're like an entrepreneur, it's hard to go back for working for someone. And so, <clears throat> yeah, just two and a half years after that, I branched out on my own again and have been doing done for you marketing services ever since. Also branching into like teaching business owners how to do it themselves. Oh, yeah. um, because I think that's super cool. When, that's you know, so funny, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think it's more effective too. If you know your messaging and your audience really well, you just, people get confused on the channels on how to reach them. Yes. Once you figure that out, yeah, it's golden. Yes. Yeah. What do you, what's the most common, what's the biggest misperception you find when you're talking with new business owners about their marketing efforts or their ideas of marketing in 2024? Yeah. So a lot of people just, I, feel like focus on social media only. And I think that does overwhelm them because there's so many different avenues and there's so many features within each tool now, but it, that seems to be a big myth. Like when people think of digital marketing, they think of social media when it encompasses so much more. Yes. Yeah. Marketing is a, it's a loaded term in 2024 that can mean so much yet means so little at the same time. Yeah. And I think people get discouraged because I, mean, I think I saw I don't even know. Is there like a billion pieces of content going up a day or something that insane is. like that? I think so. Something insane like that. And now like the touch point used to be what, seven times? Now it's, that's hard. Like when you start to see stats like that, how do I even get started? What's the point? Just guiding them through that to find their people. That know? That's interesting. The comment you made is interesting to me because as we've been building the lab here and the business athlete performance lab, and uh, we've been doing it very much all organically as you've mm -hmm. been watching and witnessing and participating with us. And I can see the discouragement of a business owner. Yeah. Because you're asking yourself whether you're going to put an inordinate amount of time into organic, creating content, engaging, and then it's, or, or you're going to, or you're going to take that money and spend it on paid and keep your fingers crossed that the paid works. Right. Or it's a combination of both. But man, is it, it is difficult cut, cutting through all of the noise in the world these days, is it not? It totally is. Yeah, it really is. There's so much noise. It's crazy. Yeah, there, there, there's a ton of noise. And it's finding a way to, to get yourself to stand out from that noise. And I believe I read a stat here, Nicole, that the average user on Instagram is worth $81.04 wow. for Facebook. Interesting. I haven't heard that one. But think about that. So... The, the Instagram Facebook model is brilliant, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Keith, hey, Nicole, just put a bunch of content up for free. We're going to give you a platform. Put it up for free. Just put it up. And then they take mm -hmm. that content and monetize the hell out of it and, and, mm -hmm. make, and make their $81 off of me. Right. It's just brilliant, right? It's here's the platform. Put your content, there, content up there and hopefully somebody sees it. I, I will tell you, and I'm sure you've noticed this too as a marketer, Organic reach has changed considerably, has it not? Like you can't no. reach anybody, right? No. But the like whole pay to play thing is not a joke. <laughs> it's true. So Nicole, our, our goal here is to give people nuggets to, to hang yeah. on. Their goals. So somebody's listening right now, a business owner who, who might be calling on you or calling on me. Are you saying to somebody right now, don't waste your time on organic? Are you saying to somebody right now, organic and paid or are you saying to somebody unless you have some full strategy don't even waste your time on organic yeah no i am saying <clears throat> no i would definitely like i've always done organic that's one thing that my agency does not do is pay per click it's just that has that whole landscape has changed a lot as well and, that, and there definitely is a good time for ads to be added in but yes i don't know I, yeah the budgets are higher the, the click are higher so definitely get someone that knows what they're doing because i've seen a lot of people burn through a lot of money with no results but yeah i definitely think every business is so unique so different i do think social media is definitely important it's just not the only one um i think once 
who your people are, where they're hanging out, what their struggles are. It makes your messaging and your marketing so much more effective. <clears throat> and then there's other channels as well. Like email has really come full circle, networking, referrals, like that kind of way to get in front of other people as well by connecting with others. There's just, yeah, there's a tons of different ways and yes, you can do it organically and it will seem like a lot in the beginning. It might take some time, but once you get used to doing it, working out like a yeah. schedule and a routine and being accountable and being consistent, then you'll start to see some results. The key really is the consistency, isn't it? It is 100%. That's the biggest mistake I see <clears throat> business owners make as far as their marketing, whichever way you do it, whether it's social yes. or email or blogging or podcasting or going to events, like what, pick one to start with and just be super consistent with it. Fun funniest thing yet the most difficult thing, which is just to post content consistently. I know even yeah. myself as a professional content creator and poster, mm -hmm. there's some days when you're like, oh, oh man, do I gotta post this today? Or or I'm, right. crawling, or I'm crawling into bed realizing, oh man, I don't have my post scheduled for the morning. Yeah, totally. Oh, I'm terrible. I'm like, do what I say, not as I do. I post a lot of stories because those are quick and easy, but as far yes. as posts, yeah. And I, again, it's, we analyze it to death or there's a million other things going on. So yeah, I love that if you said to schedule it out. Cause that's great too. Even if you can take 30 minutes, beginning of the week, even think about your posts, maybe not yes. completely write them out, but have an idea yes. it makes it so much easier. Oh, this is what's coming up. I'm a big fan of, so I'm a big personal user of Taplio. That's my personal, my, my personal platform. So again, mm. leaving nuggets for the audience here. I'm my personal LinkedIn branding platform is Taplio. Uh, I know there's tons of scheduling platforms out there. I like oh, yeah. the simplicity yeah. of Taplio, the statistics it gives me. And I hate the name though. Yeah, it's not a cool name. No. And I'm sorry to the Taplio group that runs this. Maybe you're going to tune in. Maybe you want to sponsor the show. Yeah. We still like the name. Cool. We don't like the name. I'm sorry. I just, yeah. but, but I guess if we're talking about your name. Maybe it's working then. Mm -hmm. So as, as audience can see right now, we're in the business segment. As we're, interviewing, as we're interviewing each other here. And again, the goal here is to go through the, the, the four platforms of business athlete performance, lifestyle longevity. So as I'm continuing to interview Nicole, let's pivot over to, check this out. Let's pivot over to. Ooh, yeah. No. Let's and do, when do I get to interview you? When is it your turn? Well, you or can ask. I text you? No, you can ask me anything. Where's the okay. A? I guess my team didn't make me the A. Okay, let's, okay. You go. Ask me anything. AMA. No rules. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're in Canada, eh? Um, I'm in so Canada, you're... eh? I'm in the middle of the country, eh? Flat, right? Where you are? Flat. I am absolutely flat. I can see for miles. And... Can you see Mount Hood? Can you see Mount Hood from where you are? I bet you on a clear day, I just might be able to see that far west. No, I can't see Mount Hood, Nicole. No, I can't. I just can't. No. So I'm in Canada. This is a global, this is a North American morning show. I'm in Canada, yes. Awesome. Three okay. wonderful and children. Yes. I yes. saw the picture recently. Yeah. Tell us about him. Yes. I have a 17 year old son. I have a 14 year old daughter and an eight year old bonus daughter, my daughter. So I'll, I'll, I'll call the bonus daughter for the first time, but then we'll just put it aside. And I got three kids. So I got a 17 year old Carter. I got a 14 year old Piper and I got an eight year old Brooke and they're awesome. And I have a wonderful wife, Lauren who was just finishing her morning run. She's training for a marathon coming up here in May. Yeah, that she's striving to do some personal bests at. So I'm excited about that for her. But that's my story. I'm not my story. Yeah, you got three kids here in Canada, Nicole. Yeah, you got dogs. Don't forget about those dogs. I do have, thank you, I do have dogs. <laughs> and to all the people tuning in right now, all the big six viewers right now, hey, the numbers are going up. Oh, hey. The numbers are going up. Hello, everybody. I got two dogs. I have a wonderful English bulldog named Charlie Ray. And I have a wonderful Pomeranian, Nicole, named, named Lola. Yeah, and the Pomeranian runs the house. Like, actually runs the house. She's the smallest little critter with the biggest personality and the biggest set of cojones to, to get us all moving, man. <laughs> She gets us going. I will tell you, she gets us going every single day. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. It is I love awesome. it's the little ones that always are sassy and run like everybody else. It cracks me up. 
It's true. It's true. It's true. Good morning, nation. We see a bunch of y'all tuning in here this morning. You're joining Keith and Nicole here live in the lab. Mornings in the lab, our brand new morning show. Nicole, numbers are going up. People are too. I'm telling you, when we made this decision, and I don't know about you, but I'm active in the I'm active on LinkedIn in the mornings here. So between mm-hmm. 6 a.m. Central Time and 9 a.m. Central Time, LinkedIn is hopping. I usually am not on that early because I am getting my routine in order. <laughs> <laughs> but now i know <laughs> so i gotta tell the audience i was getting finished my run this morning and i was i hadn't heard from nicole yet and i'm like okay i'm gonna send her a text and i'm a big friend i'm a big fan of authenticity i said nicole we cannot nicole we got double digit viewers right now watching us this morning there's more viewers happening right now than i usually get in my my no i'm joking we get thousands of people tuning in live in the lab with keith but right now we got a big selection of people popping in which is awesome good morning to everybody tuning in to Keith and Nicole, we're just we're spending some time having you guys get to know us because we're doing this every single day. So you're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna hear from oh, Bernard. Gonna hear and, <laughs> you're gonna hear Bernard and Billis a lot. Hey, there you go, Bernard and Billis in the mornings. Oh yeah, the double B. Or is it Billis and Bernard? Yeah, uh, I don't well, know. The, the E comes before <laughs> I, so I think it might have to be Bernard and Billis in the in the lab. I don't know. Keith and Nicole. Anyways, we're here this morning with you guys, spending our time here, hanging out, drinking our coffee, getting yourselves going. Um, are you a Peloton user? No. I am. I Peloton's been a big inspiration for me, Nicole, for the Business Athlete Performance Lab. Mm-hmm. I love how they do a wonderful job creating community and creating engagement with their instructors and yeah. helping people feel accountable and motivated. They do a wonderful yeah. job of that. Mm-hmm. Is it? Don't they have treadmills now? Because before, did they just start with stationary bikes? And I hate riding bikes, so that's probably why I do. And my husband's like a huge mountain biker, like huge. And I'm like, mm-hmm, bye. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. Why do you hate yeah. riding bikes? Who, who? I don't know. Who hates riding bikes, Nicole Bernard? Honestly, Me, God. apparently, I hate donuts too. If we're gonna throw that out there. Oh so, my God, you hate donuts? I, I do. And Dude, <laughs> how do you hate donuts? I don't know. I think they're overrated. It's actually, like, you're not talking about donuts in a car like you spin around in tires. You actually like food donuts. Like sprinkles, glazed chocolate in the oven. Don't like that. Right. So I, I think I got to just, all right. So I was just kicking Nicole out of the lab. I'm sorry. I, I, I have control of the buttons here. She's gone. I can't work with somebody who hates donuts. I can't do it. I, I really can't do it. I think that donuts are the greatest, one of the greatest foods ever made, Nicole Bernard. And the fact that, so me and don't, so here, me, donuts, cake, and cookies or cookie dough, I'm done. I love those. I love cookie dough. I would rather the cookie dough than the actual cookie. I love cake. I love peanut butter. I just don't like donuts. <laughs> <laughs> So we know I've never met somebody in my entire life that doesn't like donuts. I know. I, it's weird. I know. I've heard it from multiple people. I know. I get it. Is it the I'm texture? Weird. I don't know. I, I really don't. I was to say, I, I'm really like a chocolate lover, but I still love cake. Like, yes. I love cake. So yes. I, I, oh, I love cake. I, I love cake. Yes. So I'm not, but I'm not, a, are you a dessert person? Dessert is what you saw that spoonful of peanut butter with chocolate chips in it so that's predictable though that's good there's nothing wrong with that yeah, yeah. So. it's funny because my wife sometimes will i love my wife love her to pieces and she'll some she'll sometimes overthink the dessert process i'm like no i just want a jar of peanut butter and some chocolate chips and i'm done i don't need the extravagant cake with the beautiful fondant and all the wonderful Listen, I appreciate and I love the effort. Don't misunderstand that. Yeah. Dude, just give me a peanut butter jar and chocolate chips and a freaking spoon and we're off to the races. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So we are 39 minutes into our first hour. Keith and Nicole, Keith Bills, Nicole Bernard, live mornings in the lab. Our brand new show launching here in the Business Athlete Performance Lab. We're going to go Monday to Friday. 7 a.m. Central. That's uh, 2 o'clock in the morning out there on the West Coast. So Nicole's changed her whole life around just to hold herself accountable. And uh, we haven't even dug into this 
part of the conversation, which I've been eager to, and I've been holding it back from Nicole. But so Nicole is starting something today. No, she was supposed to start something last Friday. Mm-hmm. But a little bit of illness yeah. crept through the house and crept through Nicole, which prevented her from getting started. Nicole, what are you starting? Well, yeah, I'm going to start for training for my first ultra. And yeah, that's why I keep going on mute because I still am like coughing half the time. So <laughs> sorry about that. That's okay. You're wondering like, why does she keep going on mute? <laughs> but yeah, no, Friday I was supposed to do the Goggins challenge. So mm. for running four miles every four hours for 48 hours, that was going to kick off my training, but I'm going to start that this week. So still recuperating, but yeah, that will be the official kickoff. Cause I think Friday the 15th is like my official start date of training for yes. my first ultra marathon in June. Yeah. So to everybody listening, Nicole Bernard, who might not know what an ultra marathon is, what's an ultra marathon? It's yeah. I think, I guess technically anything over a marathon, which also a marathon would be 26 miles. So the one that I'm doing is 31 miles. It's like a 50 K. So okay. Oh, so just 31 50. and some change, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And what is the, how long, how long is it going to take you to complete that? Oh God. I don't know. <laughs> no, I was just looking. Yeah. I don't know a few, awesome. obviously. I, yeah, a few hours, obviously, probably five or six hours, I would think. I was looking at the pace. So I have, have you ever heard of Shalane? I don't know if I'm saying her name right. Flanagan, she's like the best, fastest U.S. runner ever. She like shattered the Boston and the New York oh. Marathon. So I have all of her. She's got some cookbooks. And so she also has a training like program in one of her cookbooks. And I think like a decent pace, it would be like, I can't remember, five and a half hours. I can't remember what that pace was. So I'm, I'll have to look again. Maybe I'll have an update tomorrow on what, maybe I can set a goal for my time, but yeah. just even starting to wrap my head around how long I'll be running. How, yeah, no kidding. And the funny thing is, Nation, is that when I met Nicole, so when I started the Live in the Lab with Keith Billis show back at the end of 23, looking for some great guests and looking for people that you know embody the business athlete spirit, was reading Entrepreneur Magazine, Entrepreneur? Yeah, Entrepreneur Magazine. And I found this article that said this lady ran 48 miles in 48 hours. And I said to myself, why? Yeah, what's wrong with her? <laughs> so I knocked on her door. I'm like, yeah, hey, uh, are you the person that ran 48 miles in 48 hours? And Nicole's like, yeah, that's me. I'm like, you want to come and talk about that? Or do you have a little bit of a challenge going on or something? She's like, no, I'm just going to run 48 miles in 48 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's fun. I mean, I was about to say it's fun. It's really not fun, but the emotions that you go through and doing something like that, that's no, what I like. I love that. And that to me is why we are here today. And that to me is what I'm hoping and what we are hoping to build with the Business Athlete Performance Lab is to inspire people to get out of their zone, to do the things that they're not comfortable doing or unfamiliar with doing or things that they don't want to do. So the fact that in a bizarre way, it's not fun, but it is fun running for five and a half hours. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even run for five minutes. <laughs> You'll get there. I bet you can run for five minutes. So I did run for five minutes on Friday, for five minutes straight. Lauren's like, good for you. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yay. Good for you. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> you got to start somewhere. Yes. Because I hate it. So, yeah. I, so you're running for five. So I can't even wrap my head around. I worked with a colleague here in the past who ran, did, did tri triathlons and I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that she'd be training for 12 hours in a day. Yeah, I know. So I wake up, have my coffee, go through my morning routine. There's Nicole doing her thing. And then I go to work and go train and go have lunch with my parents. There's Nicole still doing her marathon. And then I go and hang out with my kids and go watch a hockey game and go have some dinner. And there's Nicole still doing her marathon. I'm like, all right, so Nicole's, and her name was Nicole at the time. I'm like, oh my God, Nicole is actually still doing her marathon. Man. 12 hours later, she's still running. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. That's a long time. It is long. How, how often do you train during the day? Do you, are you a Monday to Friday trainer? Are you a seven days a week kind of person or what do you do, Nicole? Pretty much. Yeah. I'm pretty much every day. Sometimes if I feel like I need to take a day off, I will like pretty much. Yeah. Like back to that whole, when I started like following David Goggins, like the whole kind of go every day, which felt yes. good to me. I think everybody's different. If I feel like I need a rest day, I take it, but usually it's just pretty much 
every day at the same time. Like well, during the week, so my kids go to school, even on the weekends, it's about that same time. So yeah, that's just worked for me. But yeah, I need to, again, start wrapping my head around like running and then going to do some strength training because that's not in my routine right now. So that's my next step. <clears throat> strength training to me is the magic. The running and the cardio obviously helps the heart, but the strength training to me is the foundation that. Uh, uh, I don't know. I like feeling strong. There's something about yeah. feeling strong. And it's incredible to me how much your core gets stronger when you're running. Yeah. I don't think it's about crazy. it, but it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really does. Considerably. I it's holding everything up, but yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. And I guess the, the, it is the idea of, of, of finding what works for you, right? It's taken me yeah. a long time to figure out what works for me. Yeah. But I will how tell you. you I just, I just kept trying things, frankly. And then I, I think between trying things and between maturity, yeah. to be honest with you, and just as time goes on, recognizing what you're, what's, what works, what doesn't work, and where you start not caring about certain things. And, yeah. But I, I would say that it, I really found my calling when I ended up at, at Focus when I met AJ Zeglin and, and then the gang there eight years ago when this whole business athlete mindset started for me. But yeah, so I go seven days a week. And when I say I go seven days a week, that includes like, like a day off or a rest recovery day is training day for me. Mm -hmm. So like a rest and recovery day for me is no different than a lifting day. I just do something different. So mm -hmm. instead, of, instead of lifting weight, I might purposely go lay on the couch for 30 minutes or go purposely do a different activity that offsets the activity the day before. Yeah. You, you know what I'm trying to say? So I, I purposely do that because if I don't purposely take a day off or like a rest recovery day, then it doesn't seem intentional to me. Yeah. Yeah. I like having that time. No matter, yes. yeah, no matter what you're doing, but it's still set aside. Do you stretch at all? Do you have any good tips on stretching? Because I, it's another thing that I hate. But I do. I'm, I do. Okay. Stretching was game changer for me, Nicole Bernard. It was a, when I, again, I'm back to Peloton. Sorry, I'll just knock on their door. Pelotons did a really wonderful job of blurring the lines between what yoga is and what stretching is. Yeah. When you look at their platform, yoga and stretching and mobility are really one and the same. Once I started stretching, doing yoga, probably about four years ago, it was a game changer for me, Nicole. As simple as, and I hate to say it, but I'll say it, just putting my socks on. Yeah. Honest to God, like being able to bend over and put my leg up on my other leg and just put a sock on and be comfortable doing that. That was game changer for me because I was yeah. not getting any younger, but I stretch every single day. 100%. You? Yeah. God, oh, no. I'm like 5'1", and I can't touch my toes. <laughs> oh, so we have work to do here in the lab with Nicole Bernard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I love Pigeon. Love love Happy Baby. I joke with my family about Happy Baby. It's a big joke in my house and my kid. Happy Baby? Nope. Oh, you don't know Happy Baby. I think I need to, this could be Is fun. Stretching position. Yes. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can do this. While we're on the air here today, because this could be fun, actually. We'll do a little bit of, yeah, here we go. So let's just try this here. So I am going to put this up. So we're going to, we're doing things live on the air with the audience. And we're going to try some cool stuff here. How do I do this? So I do share, do, we're going to go share screen. Oh. I'm going to go, yeah, we're going to do this here. I'm going to go. So I'm going to show you, Nicole, what happy baby is. Okay. And my kids love watching dad do happy baby. So it is this pose. Yeah, so dad does happy baby and loves doing happy baby for the kids because the kids just love walking downstairs and seeing dad do happy baby. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dad is the best at doing happy baby. <laughs> okay, sure, let's try it. <laughs> I'm sure you can imagine that whole experience of... Yeah. <laughs> of that's, yeah, so... I love doing happy baby. It's one of my favorite exercises ever. And I love greeting my children when they come over to hang out with dad and they're like, Hey dad, what are you doing? I'm like, Oh, I'm just doing some happy baby right now. And they're like, okay, we'll come back to dinner later. Yeah. See ya. <laughs> yeah. Perhaps not the most flattering pose. <laughs> so yes, I do stretch. I love stretching. It's uh, it keeps me mobile. It keeps me agile. I just turned 52 last Friday. Happy belated birthday. That's Thank awesome. you. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, so it, it also creates the desire and the impetus to keep stretching. Yeah. Because they ain't getting any younger. Right. Yeah, it's true. 
And I love donuts. <laughs> and peanut butter. It all works together. It all works together. Yeah. yeah. Totally. 50 minutes into our first hour together. This has been fun so far. Yeah, I didn't know what to expect. I just figured we'd get on the air and start chatting and getting the audience lined up with us. And we've had some great viewership so far this morning here. And we're and, and so Nation, we're gonna take our learnings from today's show and we're gonna and the goal here is I can guarantee that I can guarantee viewers, we will improve one percent every single day. Yeah. Because we're gonna strategically work on improving things every single day. What do you got going on today, Nicole? Ooh, what's today? Monday? Lots of meetings. So yeah. I Tell tend me. to stack on Monday. So. Do you? Yeah. So you're gonna leave. You're gonna leave the show here. It's gonna be six o'clock. Mm -hmm. Kids are still sleeping. Yep. What's gonna happen next for you? I'm gonna. I'm gonna get more coffee first off, and yes. then uh, I'm gonna go through my inbox. Just start to sort that out. I find when I feel organized with that in my calendar, I know what's coming. Then I feel a lot more ready to take on the day. So nice, nice. Cool, which it is. Yeah. How about you? What are you doing after that? Oh, you're going back to the gym, right? Yeah. I'm heading back to the gym. I'm going to go get my, so I'm still figuring out my new routine here. So yeah, I'm going to go back to the gym and get my lift in. I'm going to get a ride in. I like to get on the bike and do a ride. I like to get a lift in. I'll do some stretching. So I probably got about, I don't know, 80, 90 minutes of work to do, which I thoroughly enjoy. To me, it's not work. It's enjoyment. And you know what? I'm not, to me, it's not a grind. I, I so as much as I hate running, Nicole, I like to comment on the fact that I'm grateful that I get a chance to do it. Yeah. Laura and I were talking about it on Friday. We went out for, went out for dinner here and we were driving to the restaurant. I'm like, I just freaking hate running. She's like, why do you hate it? I, go, I just, I hate it. She goes, why do you do it? I go, because it unlocks that part of my brain that says, if you hate it, run towards it. And as a leader, I think it's a great attribute to show your team that you're still willing to move towards things that make you feel uncomfortable. But that attribute of hate, I turn it into gratitude. I do because... Yeah. Many people aren't able to run or don't yeah. have that ability to run. So I do it. I hate it, but I get it done. And, and when I'm done, I feel more accomplished. So after that, I got a couple, I got to prepare for live in the lab today at noon. So this is why I'm really eager about having this morning show because we can set up the rest of the day yes. right, and, and add value to our audience. And ideally, Nicole, people tune in the morning with us and okay. I got motivated by what Nicole had to say. I see Nicole starting her 100 day journey and nation. I'm telling you, we're here for at least the next 100 days, at least, mm -hmm. and then probably even more. And over those 100 days, you're going to hear and listen and watch Nicole go through her journey to achieve her ultra marathon. And that's going to happen at the end of June. You're going to be on that ride with us. And then ideally, people will be inspired, Nicole, and they'll do things themselves. Yep. Totally. And what I'm hoping, and I know you are too, is that somebody along the way is going to hear what we have to say, and they're going to be, hey, guys, like, yes. Hey, can I come on the show with you guys and talk about my goal that I'm doing? And we're going to say, yes, come on the show. And then hopefully somebody's going to come on and say, hey, Keith, hey, Nicole. I say, yeah. And they're going to say, hey, I'm doing a marathon this spring and I want to publicly declare it. And I want your guys help and helping me be accountable to get there. Yeah. One yep. of the and things, anything, right? Whatever they want to. Yeah, absolutely. Any big goal. Right. Any big goal. I'm hoping too that people recognize that they can leave here with energy. Maybe, maybe somebody's going to a sales meeting first thing this morning. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're feeling they need some energy. They're feeling they need some hot spot to get through that next hour of their day or to get going. So I'm hoping that people tune in and go, Yeah, you know what? I got the energy from Keith this morning. I got the energy from Nicole this morning. Mm -hmm. And they go and recognize that they're going to have a great day ahead of them. That's the ambition, right? We have. It's going to pull something up here. We have a do so. The so I was working on this last night. I haven't shared this with Nicole yet because I got ahead of myself here. But the idea here is to break the show into four segments business, athlete, performance, longevity, lifestyle, have guest interaction, talk accountability, and do guest check ins. Yeah, one of the things that I really enjoy with the Peloton, Nicole, is they have a lot of live classes mm -hmm. and they have recorded classes. What I find is when you're trying to achieve something or you're on a streak or it's your birthday, at least I do anyways, is you tune into a live class because you want to have somebody call you out. Mm -hmm. It feels good. Yeah, it does. So I'm hoping that somebody signs up with us and, like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go do something with Keith and Nicole. And they're going to check in the mornings 
And they're going to say, hey, Nicole, hey, Keith, yeah, I'm on day 68 of my goal right now. And we're going to call them up publicly. I love right? that. We want people to sign, join us, create community, and try to tackle big goals together, right? Yeah. And and join us to tackle those goals because you can't. Yes, you can do them yourself, but we're really hoping to, to to create a safe space for you to uh, to do them with us. Totally. And so, where would they check in with that? Would they just check in with us here, or do they have a place that they can? I know this sounds like I'm like lobbying for <laughs> some sort of call to action, but I'm really just curious, and we haven't. I talked love about it. This. No, I love it. I love- <laughs> Call to action. Yes. So there is going to be a call to action. So ideally people will check in here on YouTube, on LinkedIn, on one of the platforms that they are tuning in on. The comments are open. Please comment, jump in and say, Hey, Hey guys, I'm here watching. Hey, I'm checking in or Hey, I'm on day 38 of my program. And then ideally what we'll do is, and I didn't get it done today, but I'm going to put it all, I'm going to put a link out into our, out into the channels and say, Hey, click this link, jump into the show. So Somebody can jump in and say, hey, I just finished running for my, my, my whatever I'm running for. So you'll check in on our platforms. We're on LinkedIn, we're on X, we're on YouTube, we're on Twitch. I'm just looking at them all here on the Facebook. So if you're tuning in right now, pop in and say hi and let us know you're tuning in and maybe we'll call you out. And if you really want to get engaged, come join the show with us. Yes. Yeah. Can we add Instagram for that too? Have we talked about that? Instagram is on. We are streaming live on Instagram. Oh, okay. too. Yeah, Yay. absolutely. So okay. if you go, yeah. So I know Nicole is, Nicole's got a big following on Instagram. So we are on Instagram as well. So if you tune into Instagram right now, you'll see us streaming on Instagram. Ideally, we're going to be streaming on TikTok here in the future too. So the plan here is to stream on all platforms. It's really just old school TV d- delivered differently. Yeah, that's true. TV, radio just being delivered differently, right? <laughs> tune us in, come find us. Looks like we're wrapping up our hour here, there, Nicole. So what's going to happen wow. now for everybody listening is that uh, we're wrapping up our first hour. We're going to get organized for tomorrow. Nicole and Keith aren't going to talk between now and tomorrow. We're just going to go back and do our thing, and then we're going to regroup tomorrow and say, hey, how are your day? I'm about 24 hours. I'm going to – so here's how it's going to work. We're going to end the stream here in the next minute or so, and then I'm going to rerun it. So it's going to loop for the next hour. So those that are tuning in from the 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock central hour, which is the 9 o'clock to 10 o'clock – Eastern hour, which is the six to seven o'clock mountain Pacific time hour. It's going to be on a loop. The nice thing is that we're still available to be checked in a pretend kind of way. So we'll see how that works today. Live in the lab today, noon today, Nicole, I have a guest joining me. Let me tell you who it is. It is Lindsay. Yes. Lindsay Epperly. Who is The boss, apparently, is what she is all about. And I probably could do a better job setting this up for Lindsay. But Lindsay's going to join us here at noon today. And she is... Yeah, let me just get this set up for us here. I'm excited to join her. So today we've got a full week of guests. We've got guests Monday, Tuesday. We have guests every single day of the week. We've got a brand new Two Dads in the Lab show coming up this Friday. Have you tuned in Two Dads in the Lab? I have. You and I? Me and Don Manuel, yeah, two dads in the lab. We are we go Fridays in the lab. We go two dads in the lab here with uh, Keith Bellis and Don Manuel. And if you're a dad, you're looking for some solutions to get two percent better. I think that uh, that is a show you might want to tune into. So I'm just quickly pulling up Lindsay Epperly here before we say goodbye to the world. There she is. So Lindsay Epperly is joining me here today. She is a CEO of Jet Set World Travel. She scaled from a one-person operation to a team of over 70 dedicated members. Recently recognized on the Inc. 5,000 fastest growing companies in the world. And uh, she has a a podcast called Who Made You the Boss? That's awesome. So that's coming up today, live in the lab at noon central time, one o'clock Eastern time with myself and Mm -hmm. Lindsay Epperly. Nicole, we're done. Hour's up. That was fast. That was fast. That was fast. Yeah. All right, nation. So Keith and Nicole are going to get out of here. Nicole's going to work. I'm going to work. And work to me is working out. It's just, it's all one and the same. So I hope you guys enjoyed the first hour. We're getting to know us. We're figuring out, we're just, we're we're making this up as we go along. And that's one of the attributes I think makes a good entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You jump in, you start moving your feet forward and you iterate and just try to be 1% better every single day. Yep. I agree. It's amazing the opportunities that kind of open up as you just move forward, even if you don't know like the end. So. It's true. It's true. And what a great way to wrap it up. You're absolutely right. It's 
And this is a good testament to that, right? You said, hey, let's do something. 10 days later, 12 days later, we're doing something and we are figuring out every single day. So I will invite the audience for this. If you're tuning in on day one, I invite you to tune in for the next 99, 100 days, next three, next, because you're going to see us get better and you're going to see the journey happen right in front of you. Awesome. All right, let's get out of here. Nicole, I will see you later. Nation, we'll see you guys at noon today, live and live with Keith Bellis, myself, and Lindsay Epperly. Noon Central Time. We are getting out of here. Thanks for joining us today. Mornings, Monday mornings in the lab with Keith and Nicole. See you guys later.